Welcome back to the lab. Another little project that's been sitting here waiting for a very long time for me to get on with and get sorted out is uh, replacing the ECU that's in the D40 Navara V8 U. VK45DE D40 Navara. It's got a manual gearbox behind it. It's got a modified 300ZX flywheel with the factory VK45DE trigger wheel cut down into a ring and welded onto the flywheel. There are some issues going on. There are some weird things. It drops a cylinder after a certain period of driving, cruising down the road, and if you just don't do anything about it, just leave your foot exactly where you are and continue driving, it drops another cylinder and then gets all rough and you just change the throttle setting a little bit and it all goes away and it's... We've tried fiddling around trying to get there, but as I said earlier, I'm more familiar with the Link stuff and I would be able to resolve that, not so much with the, the KVA. So, let's have a look where we're starting. It's actually all going to start here and here. We need to pull the file for the Ute with the Mtron software and painfully go through and work out what wires are on what pins. It's actually really not easy to do with the Mtron compared to the Link stuff. We've got our Link Extreme. In the box here, got a map sensor to replace the map sensor that's on the Ute. I'm not really all that familiar with it, don't really like it. Let's put a link one in there, it'll be better. We've got a couple of second hand link can lambda units. The KV8 has built in can lambda. I understand the new G5 when that comes out will have built in can lambda, but it's probably a bit more of an ECU than what we need for the Ute, keeping them realistically priced. So the extreme plus the can lambdas especially seeing as I've got these second hand, that's, um, that's a way to make it work. And um, a couple, these are basically, they're new, but they're old stock, you know, so we've got these from Kelvin from the car tubing company, A and B loom, uh, quite long ones, because I like to keep the leftover wires and stash it in my drawers and use them on other jobs. So, laptop stuff and things, write it all down, take it all back to the ute, make sure it is what it says it is, as far as, as what pins are and what plugs, and then um, label it all, and then we'll start working through the process of depinning and replacing wires as required. Here's the bracket that was used to hold the Mtron, because uh, there's no, there's just nothing with the Mtron. You've got to make your own. They may have changed that with the later models, but you literally got to make something to clamp it and hold it. There's, there's no screw holes or anything. It's just a box you're on your own kind of thing. The Link ECUs are provided with, um, I think the G5's different actually, looking at pictures online. They're provided with some clips down the side um, and this this bracket. So I've made a, a simple adapter. It's a little bit rough. It was a little bit short on material on that corner, but we're all right for what this is doing. Uh, so that goes in there like that couple of screws in that, hold that there, and the new ECU will just clip into that. I'll clip it in on the bench, and then we're only dealing with two screws to get it on there. And then we can start dealing with lengths of wires and stuff and things. So, um, that, that particular harness there, that goes away, that doesn't stay in the vehicle. When we go to the link, uh, this is for the onboard Lambda, which is in the ECU, uh, if we put a G5, if we waited and put a G5 ECU from Link, and here that has onboard Lambda, so you would run these wires. Uh, seeing as we don't have onboard Lambda on our G4X Extreme, uh, those wires go away, and one unit per Lambda, uh, that's the plug right there that I'm just touching with that one there. So this unit will go somewhere, and then there's, there's four wires. So there's a power, a ground, and the two can wires, high and low. So this, I guess, stick those on the firewall, run a small harness um, with four wires going into the engine bay instead of you know, a few. I'm not going to count them. It's just, it, it'll be an even number because there's two sensors, a few. Spaghetti everywhere, beyond the point of no return. Kind of, sort of, the old Mtron stuff and things here, slowly being 
dissected and pulled to pieces. And eventually we're going to need a program for in there, a tune to make that go. So this is Christopher's U, you know this one. So that's a VK45DE as well. You'll notice a different orientation of the throttle and the plenum and all that. So the tune won't be perfect. But it's got same size injectors and same um, basic engine layout, etc. It'll be enough, it'll run. Everything, all the wiring's all on the wrong pins and stuff that I'll be settings to change. But it'll be enough of a tune to start it, run it, get it to the shop and tune it properly. Well that escalated quickly, didn't it? Needed to get to the debt sensors, detonation sensors, one, two, being a V, so you know which bank's doing which. And uh, the only way that's going to happen, realistically, is to pull the entire inlet manifold off. So that's been cast aside there. Wish we had a supercharger to sit on here instead. Be nice. Actually, I don't because it would cost so much money to run it. Even ITBs would be really cool, but again, it's just going to cost more in fuel, possibly. Might be less, who knows. Um, got some Bosch ones from Kelvin, cartoon company. Brand new, so we know what we've got. These are wide band ones. I don't know, there's narrow band, wide band debt sensors, but whatever. And some brand new plugs and everything. So we'll do a little, I'll do a little harness like this has got here, a little short one, right? So you can still take the entire engine harness off and not have just two wires or three wires or whatever hanging off something that you can't get to the plugs to remove it. So we'll use this, this is way too much wire for our debt sensors. You could you could put them in the boot in the back of the ute just about so we'll use a little piece off the end here to make make the bit from there so a plug here somewhere and we'll just use a a deutsch connector one of these ones is in this box underneath here and uh that'll be good as gold done diddly do beautiful bit of a harness through there deutsch connector oh, smack bang in the middle of your screen now that's basically ready to put this or close to ready to putting this back on except we're going to ditch this map sensor that's hanging off here because i'm not exactly sure what it is or whether it's going to cause grief or whatever that one there so i'll put a fitting on there for a hose so we can use the link map sensor sorted genuine nissan manifold pressure do flicky thingy had to uh, change the thread, so but that's fine. Da -da -da -da, done. A little bit of that is actually a good way to do it to check that you've got your spark timing correct and not 360 degrees out. Pull all your injectors, plugs off, or, or turn it off in the computer, whatever, and um, engine start because you won't fail the plugs as easily. And if it goes brum, you've got it right. If it goes bang, bang, pop, pop, you're 360 degrees out and firing your spark plugs as the exhaust strokes going on um so i did that and if we had it right it fired up and ran cool this is why this is off right to get it in there and uh put the injectors back on crank 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 wouldn't start but the engine start fired up ran ran for a bit leaned itself out and stopped so that's fine we've got a little bit too little fuel will need tuning Fuel pressure in this will be different to what Christopher's ute was and stuff and things. So that's fine. I just want to get it to the point where it'll run good enough to drive it to a tuner and get it tuned. Well, that part of it's good. Uh, this this part's not good. That's running. It's good. A couple of niggly little problems, but that's sorted. It's running. Look at that. Temperature gauge works tachometer works i'm not going to tell you what the trick was to make those things go i'm keeping that to myself and you can pay me money uh fuel gauge isn't going something weird happening with that i'll have to sort that uh yes yeah, stoked so uh, tachometer probably reads wrong but we can deal with that because this is a diesel cluster with a petrol fascia so the rpm scale is not what the factory thinks it is not doing a thousand rpm it is doing i still don't know what it's doing general 
It's doing 870 RPM, or close to 900, so our RPM scale's wrong. There may be a way to fix that, or I'll ask Link nicely, because they already know what the CAM protocols are for what I'm using here to make this work, so they'll be able to tweak it for me to, to get this. But, yeah, it's, um, it'll probably blow up. I'll give it a rev and it'll explode, do you reckon? I don't, I don't think it did quite that many RPM just then, but we'll pretend it did. We've probably run that off the end of the clock at the moment because it's reading slightly high. I started hunting around for another relay to do the air conditioning clutch. I was going to do a DI digital input from the Hori switch that's on the inside there and run it through the ECU and I thought, wait, hang on a minute. If I've got those things there working like that, and I have a look in, in the software here, and I do the right things. We might not have to use the aftermarket switch that I've got there. And see, this is a bit of an issue, perhaps. But whatever, and see, air conditioning status, request off. Inactive, AC clutch, off. And so I thought, I'll set a couple of things up in the CAN software. Did you hear the engine engine RPM increased? It's expecting a load. The light is on. This is good. The computer knows and that knows that we push the button. And look, all I've got to do now is put an output to a relay and awesomeness happens. I don't have to I don't have to use this aftermarket switch here that can just go away I can punch that through there and put a blank back there awesomeness so if I push this button the RPM will come back down there you go see because it's expecting the load from the air compressor and that'll stop it stalling when I turn the air conditioning on so test drive taken care of ah, it's a bit flat but we'll sort that with a proper tune on Friday Gave it a wash, tidied up the wiring for you. It's not mint, but it'll do for a work hack. That engine's a bit tired anyway, so expect it to come out at some point in time. ECU tucked away in there, all nice and tidy. Doing all the things it needs to do. <clears throat> he sees bravely as he prepares to put the key in it and see if it'll start first pop. It is warm. Can't complain about that too much, can we? Um, if there was noise, it's because I've just, I've just grabbed the microphone. I shouldn't really do that at home, but you guys will have appreciated that, I'm sure. Right, tune on Friday. Thanks for watching. Cheers, boy.